And I just asked my colleague, what do you think of that? And he says, that's a disgusting message, working for the weekend. What's wrong with that? We work to be productive human beings. It gives us purpose and meaning in life. Someone wrote a book about this a couple of months ago. <laughs> was it you? Yeah, I was <laughs> indeed. He sees you as Captain No Fun. Well, yes, he does. I work for the yes. weekend. Yes. I'm <laughs> Captain No Fun, not you. Well, okay, <laughs> you got that? The jobs report, silence on the set, the jobs report, very important for the economy, the markets, the Federal Reserve, and yes, of course, for politics in a presidential election year. Lauren, what do we have? And it's a weekend and a party on Wall Street after this report. So U.S. hiring slowed and substantially with 175,000 jobs added or restored in April, while unemployment rises unexpectedly to 3.9 percent. That's the interpretation by investors. OK, let's see what kind of interpretation David Barnes ah. can throw on this. Uh, why don't you explain why? Why this jobs report, I think, has created that result a plus 500 on the Dow. Well, you can't have it both ways. If people believe that good jobs numbers means bad for stocks because of this absurd Phillips curve idea, and what that means is that when uh, everyone has jobs, it's inflationary, so the Fed has to raise rates. It's untrue, it's stupid, but that's what has been baked in. So now the opposite has to be true. Well, I guess if it's a disappointing jobs report, that's good news, and it means that there'll be easier financial policy. And you believe that? Easy oh, I, I think that they were going to cut rates anyways. All of this is about looking for the excuse used to do it. Okay. The Fed is already wanting to cut rates. We're just looking for data points to give them cover. Okay, stay right there. I want to take a look at Apple, how it's performing. Now, this is pre-market, of course, but you're up 12 bucks, 7% higher there, despite wow. a 10% drop in iPhone sales. This rally is surely motivated, is it not, by that gigantic stock buyback program? The biggest in history. Right. $110 billion. I'm intrigued at this stock buyback. Why are they doing such a huge stock buyback now? Why? Well, why did they not do it sooner? Why are they paying a 0.5% dividend? This is a third of their cash on hand, and they generate this free cash flow in six months. Well, so, you're the dividend. Uh, you, you, well, what you want is a dividend, not a, a, a cash buy, a buyback. Well, I can't eat a stock buyback, and I can eat a dividend, but it's fine. Let's just pretend a stock buyback's the same, which it isn't. Why $110 billion now? Because the stock hasn't gone anywhere for over two years. So they have a flat return, despite the fact they're growing quite a bit, and they have to start returning cash to shareholders. They're in a slowing growth environment, and this is the, what the data is clearly showing. Uh, it got way ahead of itself, and that's why they have to do stuff like this. It works, though, doesn't it? Look at the stock, up 7%. That's huge. Well, yeah, shareholders do that's like getting paid want. back for the risk they took. Yeah, yes. and that's, well, you got paid back right there. All right, David, you'll live to fight another day later in the show, will you yes, not? Yes, I will. All right. President Biden's calling out Japan for not accepting as many immigrants as some other countries. He's calling the Japanese, our allies, xenophobic. Is that smart? He's calling some of our allies xenophobic and saying that is why their economies aren't growing, because they don't have immigrants or migrants. Okay, what do you say to that? Xenophobia is the reason why their, their economies are not doing well. Well, the, let's first start with the part that's obvious. Uh, po economic growth is population growth plus productivity growth. That's just a basic fact. And immigration is part of population growth. So it does bring more producers and consumers into an economy. Japan and China don't do it. But why would he not mention that maybe one of the things has hurt Japan's economic growth is skyrocketing debt. 250% debt to GDP. Well, because he wants the government to spend more money, too. American debt to GDP growing has hurt our economic growth. So I don't think he should be calling Japan xenophobic, but I do believe their lack of capital in China getting in and out, the lack of immigration getting in and out, that definitely hurts their co it's country's a economies. It's a fact. Yeah. Scotty, Dave, thank you. Amgen, now they are up about what, to, as of now, $39 a share. Uh, that's after their report. They're rivals now to Eli Lilly a Novo Nordisk. Weight now, loss they? drugs. Weight loss, yeah. They've got one. Um, actually, they just scrapped one of them. It's their weight loss pill. Thought that would be so easy, right? Yeah, you take I a pill. That's a winner. The, the trial data wasn't so good. So now they're doubling down on their weight loss shot. You've got that look on your face, Barnson, where you want to say something. Well, we're huge shareholders of Amgen. We love it. I don't think that they've scrapped the weight loss pill. I think they're putting it on the back burner to focus on the injection side. But uh, there's not going to be a duopoly here. You see Eli Lilly down quite a bit today. They've had the uh, full run on these weight loss pills, really promising. Now, again, Amgen still has to go to stage three now, but they're moving forward to these clinical studies in stage three. Well, the other two, Eli Lilly and Novo Nordisk, they can't keep up with the demand. Yeah. So, so 
I Along can't. comes oh. uh, Amgen. They've got something going for them, maybe later this year or who knows when. They can add to the supply. Also had a very promising oncology uh, treatment with Amgen as well, a lung cancer. So really, really wonderful report yesterday. What's it pay? What dividend? Uh, they're paying over 3% and they've grown the dividend 12% per year, 10 years in a row. All right, not bad. Expedia. I believe that this is a very up market, but they are down 11 percent. I thought everybody is traveling again. I think this is part of the overall economy. Slowing what are you down. laughing at? Everybody is traveling again, but not so much now as they used to. Okay. iPhone sales still strong, but down 10 percent. So go ahead. He's trying to get in. Go ahead. You made the point about DoorDash as well. People are ordering, but they don't make money. Expedia, people are traveling, they don't make money. So it doesn't matter if the fundamental business is doing well if they can't get profits Expedia out of it. Expedia makes no profit? Very small. The margins are teeny tiny. Uh, they do have a problem with VRBO. It's like the Airbnb for Expedia. Yeah. They spent a lot of money to turn that around and it hasn't worked yet. It's down 11%. That's a big drop. Okay, block, mobile payment people, as in blockchain, I believe. Yep. Big jump this morning, though. What's going on? It's, they, um, they raised their annual forecast. Um, it was a good quarter, boosted by Bitcoin. Bitcoin hit a record in the quarter, right? So there you have it. Do you have any comment? I'm sorry, I'm interrupting you all the time. I just want to get to Barnes here. Do you have any comment on uh, Bitcoin? 10% of their profits going to Bitcoin. I guess we don't have to worry about them putting that much into Bitcoin. <laughs> okay, all right. Cash App is very popular. Uh, oh, wait a minute. A Coinbase. Up. Yes. They had a good report. Mm -hmm. And they're only up a tiny fraction. It, okay, this was not a good report. This was a great report. They beat on every single front. The issue is the sentiment around Bitcoin. And often Coinbase is considered a proxy for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Okay, you got five seconds. Coinbase is only trading at 2,200 times earnings. <laughs> Whoa. The highest P.E. ratio I've ever seen. <laughs> so congratulations. Well, that's very good. That's very good. Wow. That's very good. We need you. Real number. Uh, uh, oh, wait a minute. We're not done with Barnes & Just yet. Oh, no. He's here with his, uh, with his dividend picks. And the first one is Clorox. I hate to bring in these boring companies that make money <laughs> and return some of it to shareholders and Clorox doing By the something. way, my, my disinfectant wipes are like $8 now for one canister. That's crazy. You talk about pricing power. Yeah. People love Why uh, stop dis buying them? They love disinfectants. <laughs> Clorox is, uh, is down a bit with their earnings. Really strong pricing power. Great company, great yield, 3.5%, growing high single digits per year. Can't recommend Clorox enough. Got it. Uh, Lionel, ba ba Lionel Basil. I love the Good fact job. that we do this every time. I know, and I can it never is a tricky it. And I never know what they do. Uh, Lion Del Bazell is the largest in terms of petrochemicals. They're, they're taking natural gas liquids in your cosmetics and all kinds of materials get made from it. It's a very important company, but with high oil and low natural gas prices, they do very, very well. Five and a half percent dividend yield. Now you're and they've grown it double digits every year. We've owned it for over a decade. Huge dividend. We're getting about 20 percent a year on what we originally paid for it. Wow. OK, I'll take that. Yeah. Thank you, David. Northwestern University has just hit with a federal complaint over their handling of anti-Israel protesters. What is the complaint, Lauren? So uh, the university cut a deal with the protesters and they gave them some of their demands. They would give five Palestinian students free rides, free tuition, fund two Palestinian faculty members per year, and then dedicate space for Muslim students. That's at the expense of other students. What? So a nonprofit says the school violated Title VI of the Civil yeah. Rights Act, they which did. prohibits discrimination on right. the basis of color, origin, race, that for schools that get federal funding. Outrageous. What's happened to Jewish students? And they do that. I mean, that. If, you want to you want to say how but is outraged any vetting you are? going on? If you're bring if these are being brought over from Palestine, how do you know if they're right, you can't not anti-Semitic or right. have terrorist tendencies? No, well, there's the no, vetting? no, there's no vetting going on, and they don't want to do the vetting. It, it, frankly, if they did the vetting, they'd probably vet for terrorists for pro-Hamas, because this is out of control. They lack any worldview, they lack any moral principles to adjudicate this. And here's the issue that's driving me crazy. This idea that, well, the protesting is sort of a birthright. It's a rite of passage for college students to go through a temper tantrum. We all, not just college students, we all have freedom of speech, freedom of assembly. None of us, including college students, have a right to take over someone else's building. We're teaching these kids, we're infantilizing them, that the world revolves 
revolves around them and their concerns and that we're going to let them set up camps for two weeks at a time on someone else's property. I want the list of all these people that say they're so proud of their protesting and they're wearing a mask so you can't see who they are. I want all their names to be published so every one of those UCLA people and and Columbia people never get hired by decent entrepreneurial private sector people. I will never hire those people. Got it. 